Hey everyone, this is Mr. Everything, and I uh, picked up a 2012 Mac Mini, which was definitely the most popular option up until last year when the uh, 2018 model kind of pretty much is without a doubt the best one to go with, but it is still priced pretty high. So I still think for the money, this is definitely a really good option because now it's a little bit more affordable with the newer ones out and you still can get a good amount of performance. Uh, this is the uh, i7 model and I did added an extra hard drive to it. I thought I would show a little bit. I mean, there's not too much to see here. Uh, I used to just sit my uh, old laptop here just on this and I quit using the screen and the keyboard and I hooked it up to my monitor. So it fits here, takes up less space. That's just some surface things. It doesn't really go with that. I'm not exactly sure how to do this, but I wanted to show more of a real world um, example rather than just talking about it or specs. Um, a lot of the older videos, I mean, the, the spec should, or the performance, the benchmarks should basically be the same as what they were back then. Uh, most videos, they don't show you actually using it, booting it up, things like that. Now, this does have a solid state drive. Uh, it fortunately it actually came with an Apple solid state drive, so someone must have paid a good amount for this back in 2012 or 2013 new. Uh, so I didn't have to add one. It wasn't someone else added one. It was never open from what I can tell. And then I did buy uh, a terabyte to add into it, which is a bit of a process. But I'm going to go ahead and boot it up. I'll tell you when. I don't know if you can hear the tone, but so I just hit the power. And you can hear it. I don't know if you could hear that boot sound. So I'm not going to speed anything up, just let it take its time. And I, I, I guess you could just go by the timeline. I think it takes about 26 seconds. This is after I put all my stuff on it. When I first started out, it took like maybe 13 or 14 seconds. So it's not as fast, but still, I mean, t under 30 is still great, I mean, compared to what I was used to. I was used to like a, several minutes until things could actually work on a Windows laptop. I'm not sure if the serial number really matters or not, but I've seen other people block them. But you can see it's a 2012 model, i7, came with 8 gigs of RAM. Um, I can't tell if it was factory or not. I would think it probably would be, but I'm not sure. And then it has the... Uh, Intel graphics. And then uh, when I got it again, it came with the SSD, and I had to do some research, and then I ended up getting just a, I got a 7200 RPM just because I thought that would go with the solid state a little bit better. I just have it set up as a data drive. It should be good enough for me. I, I really don't think I would need everything together on a Fusion. I really don't plan to have any that many programs. I might upgrade it to 16 gigabytes of RAM. I'm not sure. So far from what I've done, I, it rarely ever uses any of the shared memory or whatever the thing. This is also, I got this because I wanted to have my first computer that was a Mac because I've always used Windows. But it was called swap memory. And you can see everything's pretty minimal. I'm not sure why it was actually reading five gigabytes used, but then that went away. Maybe that was from the last time I had it booted up with everything open. But I, I really, uh, I'm not sure if I would need to upgrade the RAM. It's not too expensive to do at this point. What most people don't show is actual real world applications. So I figured I would open a few here.
I think the bottleneck here, if anything, is just my uh, internet speed, which isn't that great. But everything to me, I think, works at a decent speed. Again, I'm no computer expert, but for what I use it for, it's an improvement over my laptop. See, the memory's not too high, but that seems to be something when you have multiple tabs open in Chrome. This Chrome uses a lot of memory, but uh, if you're multitasking, I wouldn't think you'd need that many tabs open in Chrome if you're doing other things. And usually, I just use Chrome with tabs with very little else open. And what's great about the 2012 model is it has USB 3.0, so there's four of those. So even though it's not the most modern, it's more than enough, for, I think, for most people. And it has uh, the modern, uh, I guess, antenna for Bluetooth. Uh, AirDrop works fine on it. As you can see. The main thing that people seem to always use as a benchmark is video editing, but I'm not really that big into it uh, on YouTube. It just almost seems like a waste of time unless you have a ton of traffic, then it might be worth that effort. Um, I use my iPad Pro. It seems, uh, I guess using iMovie on here with a mouse might be a little bit easier, but I don't really have any trouble using it on the iPad. I might try it on here, but to me that wouldn't really be an indicator of performance for what I use it for. And as far as YouTube goes, I mean, it can play 1440p. Uh, I'm not sure if it, I think it can do 4K, but my internet can't keep up with that, so it would basically buffer nonstop. Uh, my old computer kind of got choppy with 1080 60. It pretty much only drops a frame, like if you're moving the cursor or like bringing up things, sometimes it'll... And again, 1440 should play fine too, but it takes a bit to, to load, so I usually don't use that if, if it's in 60 frames. So in 1440 at 60 frames, it's still no drop frames. It seems to be able to handle that. I only have a 1080p monitor anyway. So even though I can't really buffer 4K, I don't really have a need for it. 1440 always works for me. You get a little bit of higher video quality on YouTube when you stream it at the higher res. But you can see it. That's how quickly it needs to buffer. Now, I find that the prices now are really good. Uh, I guess if you wanted a dual core i5, they're about, you can probably get them as low as 200, 250, I wouldn't get any of these unless you get a solid state drive. So either get one cheaper and buy a solid state because they've come down a lot in price and put a solid state in it or get one that already has someone that put a solid state in it and then you pay a little bit more but you don't have to do the work. Or if you want to spend a little more, the i7s are about 400 to 600 and some people ask even more for some reason. but. They're at 400, 450 is the sweet spot. I got mine for only 350. All you gotta do is just wait about a week and you'll find good prices if you're patient. I would recommend the i7 just because it's quad core. It, some of these are from companies, but I try and buy from an individual seller. Although usually the companies offer warranties and the individuals don't always. But you can see the prices here aren't too bad. So if you're patient, you can definitely get a deal. And now this is the 2.3 gigahertz. I believe the server edition's 2.6. I don't really think that really matters really at all. Um, I think it's way more important to go from the i5 dual core to the i7 quad core than 300 megahertz between the two models. 
and then the server. The only thing, I think it has two drives installed in it. So if you did want to add another uh, a solid state or something, if it has two in it, you could just replace the, uh, I think it, when it's upside down, it's considered the lower bay. That one's easy to get to. And then you'd still have the other storage to where if you do it the way I did it, and you only have the one, and then you gotta take the whole thing apart to put that bottom drive in. Just depends how much you wanna do and how much you've worked on computers in the past. There'd be something particular anyone wanted to see. I could definitely do something more specific, but for me, I'm not gonna game on this. I have a Xbox One X and a PS4 Pro. I'd prefer to game on consoles and these last you know, 4K models, they're good enough for me. So as far as gaming, I don't care at all. And so it's, I just want it for speed, for you know, SSD, and for just the processor ability. I don't really care about the graphics. I think the Intel is good enough for what I'm using it for. My video to be a little bit different than others, instead of just talking about it, just showing how quick most of these programs boot up. Uh, actually, while I'm at it, I don't think Photoshop's officially supported, so this one actually gives me some issues. Like I think you get the spinning wheel, but you're just see it. But once it's actually open and running, it does work fine then. So I think it was when you, and then I think I've had the exact same problem with Adobe Reader. I'm more likely to use Adobe Reader than I am Photoshop, but. It doesn't really matter. I rarely use it anymore. So hopefully that just gives you an idea of for basic use. I think it's blazing fast for the price. You can obviously do much better with something more expensive, but I think it's really a good price to performance ratio right now. And again, if anyone's interested, I could do a setup or what I'm currently working with here. I'm pretty happy with it. For I mostly do everything on an iPad now, so this is just a good to have as a a moderately capable desktop for when I need it. So thanks for watching and see me in the next one. Have a good one.